happened to him when he um, called me, the man in New York who was harassed by the people in the van. Basically, I tried to explain to him that because he didn't immediately strike back, he didn't go into a war with these people, you see? You got to go over and take a look at the Madhu Penduka Sutta in section 18, I think it is. That's your war and peace sutta. That's the one that tells you how war happens and how peace can happen. That's Madhu Pandika Sutta. That's Majima Nikaya number 18. And then he said, that's because I knew I could I could feel something happening in my brain, but I wasn't volitionally making this happen. He was on automatic. So he didn't grab that card and give birth to that reaction. He didn't give birth to it and he didn't pull the card out in relationship to the past and then make it flow into the birth of a reaction. And then before that, usually he said, all that stuff that's clinging, it didn't happen in his mind. He could tell me that. He didn't dissect so much the what followed, which had to do with um, not having, uh, you know, pulling the card out and then giving birth to it. But he could feel the clinging, the speeding up from the craving, pressure, that comes up to the speed of all the stories and thoughts and ideas and imagination and concepts about why you don't like what's happening. You see, before you fall in and pull out the card and then you give birth to the reaction. So these things are the guts of what the Buddha was trying to give the people in order to stop any kinds of disputes in the villages and things like that. These things were being subtly given inside of the suttas is what we think was going on. So that's what my idea here is to take a look at this from the backside and going backwards instead of going forward. So let me hear what you feel about this. Because I'm proposing that I get on the bike and try to ride it backwards. And I just wondered what you thought would happen. And this is what started this whole thing here early today for about two hours. We're talking about this. Now. Why don't we just go and ask them? You know, I know it's hard to ride a bike backwards with robes on, but I think that we would might get something out of the experience. So. Who has any comments on this? <laughs> um, Mr. Kema, I just wanted to um, clarify. So are you suggesting we study it backwards first, how each link um, originates, and then only how, they, um, how the cessation happens? Forget about cessation and oh. forget about Forget about um, how the suffering comes or doesn't now. He's, he's struggling to discover the links. Put yourself in the position of you don't know. Draw them on a piece of paper, okay? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like um, draw them like this, you know, on the piece of paper. You might say, um, aging and death, birth of reaction. And this, this is equivalent, isn't it, to suffering? This, it's the suffering. All of it is the suffering to, in different parts of it. Put your, try to put yourself, I want you to play a game this week, and I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the Buddha. He doesn't know what these pieces are, and he's 
processing this in his brain as a bodhisattva, and he's discovering one by one how this can exist here. What is the cause of that was this. Then he's going to hear to see what the cause of um, the habitual, this habitual reaction. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, let's see, let's change that a little bit, wait a minute. The habitual tendency, and the habitual tendency is the library. We're, we're, we always say this is the library of the past events, okay? And then what's the cause? What was the cause of the habitual tendencies being filed in a library and packed up there? How did it keep happening? Because you were what? You were clinging, right? And then, you know, that clinging is the story. And then what caused the clinging was the craving. Okay. I like or dislike. And what dislike what? The feeling painful or pleasant we, it's always it's always in the text i like to teach it in the direction that it's in the text it's pleasant painful neutral right okay and then um let's see one two three four five six um seven can be the contact so the seven link chart goes from contact, feeling, craving, clinging, habitual tendencies, birth, and aging, and death. So here, we would say fasa, right? Vedana. Upadana. Oh, that's not right. I'm sorry. Whoops. Skipped it. I like to skip that guy. I really do. <laughs> Tanha. Upadana. Whoops. Upadana. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, am I? Okay. Um. Hmm. Um, tanha. Okay. And the habitual tendency, we say bawa. And then birth is jati. And then there's a real long sentence, but we basically, I basically say, um, what's the last one? What is it, May? The last one. You remember? Jara marana soka parideva. The first word, Mara. What was it? First word, Jara Marana. Jara Marana. Oh, I was looking for Marana. Okay, Marana. There's a whole that's the whole sentence. You're right, right. But we usually what we all see, what we see is we usually see this much. Okay, Vasa. Okay, so this is a game. Now, what you have to do is make this list. Okay, just like this. And then what you do is you start up here. Now pretend you don't know anything. Pretend that you're curious about how everybody suffers, but you don't know any links. And what I want you to do is take a walk and wonder. This is what the Buddha was doing, you know, as his bodhisattva. He was in between his sittings, he was walking and contemplating and reflecting. 
how does aging and death come to be? That's the first question. How does this come to be? That's what you're going to ask each one of these. I wouldn't do it all at once. I would take a few walks and do this, you know, and just contemplate this. How does it come to be? And then the jati is the cause of this and the habitual tendencies is the pushing, the pushing into the birth, the birth of reaction happening. That's where the power is coming from. What I'm after is I'm after you getting more close into Paticca Samapada so that you can really feel how it works throughout your life and get to know it because whole things open up to you then when you hear stuff in suttas big things come alive when you go back and read anything you read before it's going to jump out at you in very different ways if you can get in touch with this simply by tapping your head with it a lot to look into it see and you're pretty this is a pretty advanced class it's like not so many people but it's real comfortable because everybody i think ever i don't know if you have the chart do you have the chart did you get it from a did, from you do an online retreat or how did you come into this i shared the chart just now uh, okay. uh the link they can download it is a, the okay chart, huh? yeah what they really need is they need the seven link chart okay and then do you have also the the uh, question if they want to play with the question page if they didn't do it before yeah. This is a comprehensive one. Uh, this has uh, everything. Uh, it has a seven uh, links, well links. The contact, okay. And yeah, it has the question. That's actually, that's, he's talking about this one. It's enough to have this one, you know, to have it because it's telling you, um, showing you where each one happens. It doesn't really tell you what the links are, does it? But it's okay. I think it's all right. Okay. Yeah. We used this in a recent retreat that we used, and boy, it opened a lot of eyes. You see what I'm saying, May? And then I want you try to try to connect with what Siddhartha did before he went into this. And next week, I want to start from one end or the other. And you ought to write me notes to see. I want to hear what you have to say about looking at it the way he discovered it was like this you see this is how it happened all the way down to the bottom now, i don't know if you can go all the way down to the bottom but if you go this far it's going to really affect your life you see to understand it through the seven pieces and then when we come back we can look at the page on aging and death and I think I'm seriously thinking about switching the numbers around. And then at the end of doing each one of these individual ones we do each week, you see, then what will happen is we'll pull the whole chart together and look at it. And you ought to have some more to say about it because you'll be watching it more. You'll be seeing it more. You'll be noticing it happening around you in life. See, the one thing about... The one thing about, um, whoops, yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought I pushed the wrong button again. <laughs> the one thing about Buddhism for me is it's alive. It is not dead. It is not ancient. It is not some antique. It is something that is priceless for this time here and now. The, the kind of people, I have so many different kinds of people that come to me, and it's not just for a blessing, see? They want to know. They want to know about the Brahma Viharas, and they want to practice it in a way because because they want to try something all the time, all the time on them, all the time through them, all the time affecting them, so their vision changes of the world and that's what buddhism does and that's what happened to the man in new york and that's why this is so cool it's um 
a practical way to get you. I hope that you all took, I'm hoping that you all took some of the um, information, okay, that, that we had done before about um, the way we were teaching and stuff. I just, my mind just went out there. <laughs> Something moved by the door. It was really funny. Um, I'm hoping, yeah, last week I gave you a, a lesson that had some things I asked you to do. And I'm hoping that, did you do it? Did any of you do it? Actually try it. So what happened when you tried it? You see, what happened? What happened, Everett, when you tried it? Oh, but uh, the contemplating the, the feeling, perception, and consciousness a bit. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I tried it. I, I could see how it, it, it comes together. I had a bit of trouble with uh, putting it together in one way, which was seeing how which taking perception uh as like the primary one and then uh asking myself well how does feeling come into just perception uh taking perception as first so that was uh but you know i i, I can see how that works but I, I don't think i'm quite done with that yet but it, it is yeah it is apparent how that uh, how that comes together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, perception perceives, so perception names things. Now, if perceptions function in order you in order for you to experience perceiving something, feel you have to have consciousness for that to happen, right? You have to be conscious, and the first thing you really perceive is feeling whether it is physical is feeling or whether it's mental is feeling see yeah so without without can you can you can you uh, perceive something if you're not conscious i mean i fought this thing too the nail and bondi just laughed at me <laughs> i deserved to be laughed at because i was determined they couldn't be hooked together and he said then go out take a walk he was don't come back until you figure it out <laughs> and, and i just walking and working in the forest and then coming back and saying you know this is the craziest thing but you're right you are cool. yeah and then feeling did you do feeling yeah so you, yeah yeah so you can't do it without being conscious right no no and how do you know what it is if you don't perceive it <laughs> <laughs> And then conscious, how do you know if you're conscious if you don't um, perceive that you are? And that was the one that I had an accident and I was coming out of consciousness. And I mean, I was, I was becoming conscious and then going out of consciousness and coming out and going in like that, you know, out and in of it. And I was trying to figure out what he was saying, but it's really true because consciousness to be conscious of something to cognize it okay to cognize it one has to be able to perceive it to get it into the what it is right and you have to have feeling involved with that so just keep working with it you know it this is the kind of thing that the monks did a lot of in the time of the buddha and it's talked about and um, the, I sort of disagree that the, uh, some of the put downs for the Majima Nikaya or the texts that they're just too difficult for people to understand. And I'm, I'm sorry, no, they're not. And I'm not a high, high, high educated person. Okay. I would like to tell you one thing. Hi. Yes, Did mindfulness, you? mindfulness makes us to be perceive something. And uh, at times, some sort of fly or itching, a big itching will, itching will make you to come out of the particular uh, mode. Am uh -huh. I correct to some? Huh? Is, is, is it, yeah. it is happening to me like that? 
Uh-huh. Yeah. You can you can perceive the observation. See, mindfulness is your observation. Your observation of things gets sharper and sharper and sharper the more that you practice. Mindfulness yes. is observation. And then these things are tied into it. In your perception, feeling, and consciousness. That's really good, Sarma. Yeah. Okay, nice. Thank you. Yeah. Nair. Yeah. Yeah. Jay. Uh, Sister Kema. Um, so feeling, can we say that it's a bare awareness and perception is the recognition of that awareness? Perceiving. That's right. Perceiving. Perception perceives. And when you perceive something, you name it. See? So what do you name a feeling? Pain, pleasant, painful, or neutral. So that's how he broke it down. Okay? Pleasant, painful, or neutral. Yeah. So this this feeling can come through any of the six sense doors. For example, I'm I'm seeing you. So that that, that that's that 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 meeting. That's that's a when the contact comes. That's a feeling. Then right. uh, that's an awareness, and the okay. perception is a recognition of that awareness. Okay. So let's let's say it the way we were learning it. We contact as condition. Feeling comes to be. Let's say that with contact as condition. Feeling comes to be with feeling as condition. Craving comes to be. So you go back into um, Majima Nikai number 38 in section, I think it's 28. Okay, you'll find the, the, the repetition of that in, um, when in Sati, son of the fisherman, you can find it, how he was teaching it to the monks. Okay, and um, he, oops, wait a minute. 38, I'm sorry. It's in 38. Yeah, I said 38, but it's in section, hmm, wait a minute. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, go to 17, section 17. For just the plain list, it's there at uh, the bottom of 353. It's in uh, um, Sutta number 38 in section 17. So with ignorance as condition, form, formations come to be. With formations as condition, consciousness comes to be. With consciousness as condition, mentality, materiality comes to be. With mentality, materiality as condition, the sixfold base comes to be. With the sixfold base as condition, contact comes to be. With the contact as condition, feeling comes to be. With feeling as condition, craving comes to be. With craving as condition, clinging comes to be. With clinging as condition, we say habitual tendencies come to be. Being, uh, being in this life is reacting. <laughs> if you go to a city, that's what you'll find out. Everybody's reacting. In the country, I think you could argue with saying just we're just being here, you know. But if you go to New York City or Philadelphia or some big city, everybody's being and they're interested in being known that they're being. <laughs> it's just really funny dramas going on with habitual uh, tendency or, or habitual tendencies as condition, uh, then birth comes to be. And this birth we're talking about is the birth of action or reaction. And most of what we're living with is reactions until we have a trained mind. And with um, birth as condition, uh, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair come to be. Now, that happens if you are untrained, but some of that is going to happen less and less and less if you put it in a perspective of how it's happening, okay? Then you're going to get less and less sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. And if you're as one of my upasakas is, uh, you just say, never mind, let it go. And as soon as you say, never mind, let go, relax, smile, come back. You are cutting down on the sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. It's how you're reducing everything out. See, is this happening? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So keep practicing. And you have the chart. 
and you go through it and read through the pieces and then understand how they're happening. But first, I want you to just experiment from aging and death back. And what we're doing here, for those who came in a little bit late, what we're doing is setting up an exercise for this coming week where you are pretending to be the bodhisattva and you don't know any of the links of dependent origination. And you are just going to practice with the list. I think it's still on the screen. I can probably go back. You're gonna practice with this list. Oh, doesn't like it. This list. And you're gonna start up here with aging and death first. And then after you're saying aging and death, how does this come to be? Well, be aging and death comes to be because of birth and the birth of reactions. The aging and death keeps happening, birth, aging, and death, okay? But aging and death, the cause of it is the birth of the reaction is causing all the sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair, the overreaction. And what was it that caused the birth? What is it that caused the birth? Habitual tendencies, the habitual tendencies to react. And what is it that caused the habitual tendencies? Clinging, the upadana, yeah? Is that that pre the speed, the pushing into habitual tendencies and then the birth of them. And then, what was causing that was craving. The I like it, I dislike it. And next week we're also going to talk about where that is that sits in this whole thing. But I might keep it until Tanha and then talk about it. But it's really interesting uh, how this is all working because there, there's actually two causes here, not one. And then the craving is caused by a feeling that's arising and an opinion has to happen to it. And that's where the red zone starts. Remember we said that the red zone is here, um, you know, it's here, wait a minute. It's here. Right, that's the red zone. Below that is the green one. And this one is the physical body. Those two fall in the physical body area, region. Contact, we have no control over that. It works through our sense doors, part of our body function. And feeling arising, whether it's pleasant, painful, or neutral, is not personally opinionated. It's our body reaction coming first. But then, you know, decisions start in the next level up in the red zone. And that's why we it's important for us to look at a couple of other friends that we'll eventually get into, which is Atta and Anatta, and the importance of understanding very clearly what this is and um, you know what it isn't. And it's not a fearful thing. It's just something you need to understand how it works. The difference between Atta and Anatta and what part it plays in the dependent origination. That is a very, very important thing. Yeah.